In today's video, we're going to talk about something quite boring, but really important, open source licenses. Do you not add one? Or maybe when you create a new repo, you just select the first one in the drop down? Or your friend might have said, you should use this one. It's really cool, but not knowing the benefits, downsides of the license that you're using. What about if you make the next Google or Uber and your license doesn't let you monetize it? Urgh, that could be really bad. At least you want to get the contributions back to make the open source project better. We're developers, we're techies. This video is going to be very light in terms of the legality of it. And I'm no lawyer, but this is my understanding of how to choose an open source license for your project and the pros and cons of the popular ones. Before we get into that, my name's Eddie. And if it's your first time here, my channel is about getting you into open source so you can get the job, client and money that you deserve. If that sounds interesting to you, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I go live and post a video. Right, back to licensing. Open source licenses allow software to be used freely, modified and shared. They are legally binding contracts between the author and the user of the software. The license is what turns code into an open source project. Without it, the software project is unusable by others, even if it has been publicly posted on GitHub. This topic might sound really daunting, especially considering there are over 200 open source licenses with varying complexity, requirements, but they do offer protection to both the contributor and the users. And no, I haven't read half of them. That would be 100. Here I'll consider the key questions you should be thinking about when considering what licenses to pick and list only some of the more commonly used types. The best place to start is to ask yourself which of the following best describes what you want to do. Let's start off with Scenario A. I work in a community or I'm contributing to an existing project. When contributing to an existing project, it might be easier or in fact a requirement to continue using that particular project's license. Find the existing license by looking for a file called license or copying. Reading through the project's readme or ultimately contacting the project maintainers if you can't find what you're looking for. Check whether the community you're involved in has a strong preference to a particular license so that you can make sure you're using this. Situation B. I want the license to be simple and permissive. A permissive license is one that guarantees the freedoms to use it, modify it, redistribute it, as well as permitting proprietary derivatives of the work. By adopting this type of license, you can almost do anything you want with your project and it places minimal restrictions on how others can use the open source project. An example of this is the MIT license. The primary terms and conditions of the MIT license are to grant permissions and indemnify developers for future use so that they're protected and not at fault as a result of what the user may use the software for. When using this license, you have the right to use, copy, modify, merge, distribute, publish, sublicense, and sell copies of the software. However, you must include the same copyright notice in all copies or any substantial portions of the software. Option C, my main objective is sharing improvement and preventing distribution of closed source versions. If you are looking to do anything with your project but want to protect the software from becoming proprietary, then GNU General Public License is for you. This type of license adopts the copy left method, where a software program is free, but all modified and extended versions of this program must also be free and released under the same terms and conditions. Therefore, as a developer, you have the right to use, modify, share the work, as long as the software that you create is released as open source as well. This means you need to make sure that your entire source code is available for free, along with the right to modify and distribute it. Proceeding without a license is not recommended. Code is considered to be creative work, and I really think it's creative too. Do you? Leave a comment below and let me know if you think it's creative or not. Which means that it is under exclusive copyright by default. To put it simply, copyright is the law restricting the right to use, modify and share creative work without the permission of the copyright holder. Other open source users and contributors will want the reassurance that they can copy, 
distribute, modify your work without the risk of repercussions, such as litigations and long legal battles. There's lots of interesting things going on at the moment in the industry that you probably know between certain companies, won't mention any names, like <coughs> AWS and <coughs> Elastic, where they're having a lot of licensing battles. If you do not have a license, this is likely to detract people from engaging with your project. Given that the ethos of open source is to have the ability to contribute, alter, and redistribute your modified versions of the project, it is essential that developers know the importance of ensuring that they have a license in place. Just to clarify, there are no bad or good licenses. The beauty is that anyone can actually create an open source license which suits their specific needs. However, this does make it more complicated to choose between the various examples that are out there. I would suggest that you might want to take a look at the open source initiatives list of approved licenses. And also behind me, we have choose an open source license website. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but this is site is maintained by GitHub. This website breaks it down really simply with three different sections on the homepage. And as you dig deeper, I will show you how you can see the comparison between the different licenses. So here, right in the middle, I want a simple and permissive license that we spoke about earlier. The MIT license we also mentioned, but to give you an example, some projects that use these licenses is Babel, .NET Core, and Rails, they all use the MIT license. But if you care about sharing, as we mentioned before, GNU GPL version three is the important one for you. Projects like Ansible, Bash, and GIMP use this license. Let's have a look at some more licenses. On this page, you can actually see the comparison between the licenses. They are displayed well and listed vertically, and then you can see the permissions, conditions, and limitations. And if you hover over each item, you can get more information on what that item means. And then if you really want to dig into the details, you can actually go and view the entire license under each section. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of licensing. It is a really interesting and scary subject. And if you have any thoughts and feedback or any questions, put it in the comments below and I'll do my best to try and help. And if I can't, I'll try and find out for you. Also, if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed my content, give the video a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel. A couple of last things. We do have a Discord channel. If you want to come and chat to us between live streams and videos, a link is in the description below. I also now have a monthly newsletter, a link to that in the description below. And I have a second YouTube channel for YouTube shorts, one minute or less videos. Link to that is in, you guessed it, the description below. Anything else you want to know? It's probably in the description below. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think I'm done in this video. <laughs>